do, do. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Behind the Door. I'm Kevin O'Donnell. Let me just check this focus here. Everything looks right. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, so, uh, welcome back. And uh, this is the fifth and final installment of the 2022-2023 winter layup at Thin Cantier Berry. Uh, Finn Cantieri Bay Ship Company in Sturgeon Bay here on the beautiful Door Peninsula. The response to this series, the four that I've posted so far, has been absolutely incredible. And in the last 41 days, the episodes have been viewed more than 70,000 times. Um, more than 7,000 hours of watch time. And uh, additionally, I picked up over 1,200 new subscribers. And you have left very nice comments more than 600 times, all of which I have read and I'm very grateful for. And uh, I'm nearly caught up with in answering. So uh, thank you so much for that. I, I really do appreciate it. Um, it was, I'd have to say, uh, for chasing boats this year, pretty successful. I caught uh, eight out of the 12 vessels coming in off the lakes. The four that I wasn't able to catch, actually both of those were articulated tug barge combinations. The um, Clyde Manning Covert, Erie Trader, which I got last year, and her older sister, the Joyce Manning Covert, Great Lakes Trader combo, which has, you know, been eluding me for years, but I will get her one day. Uh, but what did I get? I got the Thousand Foot Masabi Miner, one of my favorites, the Wilfred Sykes, the Edwin Gott, um, which got 30, over 35,000 views, just that one video alone. Let's see, the John G. Munson, another wonderful Laker, the Thousand Foot Walter J. McCarthy, and I'll put links to all of those below here, so you can check those out if you haven't seen them yet. And today, we're going to take a look at the Joseph L. Block, a perennial favorite of mine, um, but it's a little bit different. It's short, for one, and it's more about the ice. So she was backing in th down through the bay into Bay Ship with an assist from the William C. Gaynor uh, through some pretty heavy ice. So uh, yeah, that's coming up here. Um, and then, oh, I also got the brand spanking new Mark W. Barker built right here in Sturgeon Bay, just set sail this past summer, coming in through the canal and down in through the bridges. but. <laughs> it was one of those days where everything seemed just to go wrong and I wasn't well prepared and it really threw me off my game. I did manage uh, some drone footage, but not enough to build like an entire episode around. So, um, sorry about that. Things don't always work out. Um, not, every, not every excursion turns into a video. So, And the same goes for the Indiana Harbor, for which I recorded an entire episode. Take a listen. Hear that? No, of course you don't. That's because I recorded it with no sound. I thought I had sound, but there was a short in the cable, the cable like this, going from the wireless receiver into the camera. So the sound levels on the receiver were working when I looked, every time I looked actually, because I did check it, but unfortunately that sound never made it through from one end to the other and into the camera. And every single video piece I did to camera, which about two and a half hours worth of video, completely useless. I did manage to capture some really great footage of tug crews from various fleets coordinating their efforts to move the idled Case and J. Calloway out of the way to make room for the Indiana harbor's arrival. Take a look at that.
great to see those tugs perform. So on this week's uh, video, the Joseph Block, um, like I said, I tried to concentrate my efforts on the challenges of the captain and the crew of these boats, having to try to back in down through Sturgeon Bay, two base ship, through an ice choked uh, field of, of ice in, in, in Sturgeon Bay. So stick around uh, after the end of the video because I want to come back and tell you about a couple of things I've been working on. Uh, an update on my book, uh, which I first told you about, I think, last fall, late last fall. Uh, and we're nearing a release date. And uh, about a 12-day photography road trip I'm about to depart on, which I plan to document in another series of videos beyond the door. So stay tuned. All right, enjoy the video. Morning, everybody. Welcome back. We are waiting this morning for the Joseph Block to come in. We're down at a place called Bullhead Point in Sturgeon Bay. Good uh, little vantage point for watching the boats come in Bayside. So I've been listening on the radio, the chatter between the Gainer, which is the tug, William C. Gainer, and the captain of the Joe Block. And she's attempting to come in now from Idle Wild Point, but there's a Big chunks of ice right at the entrance to the bay, so the gainer's trying to break up the ice. Black is coming in at about 1.7 knots, nice and slow. Lots of ice here in the bay. I notice I got a couple of my buddies here, photography buddies, video video guys. Uh, Todd Haltofterheide, you might remember him from a previous video. He's the guy that found my tripod. Just getting some final B-roll from the shot today. And who do I run into? I run into the guy who found my tripod and turned it into the police. This is Todd, ladies and gentlemen. Say thank you, Todd, for turning in <laughs> yeah, Kevin's you, tripod yeah. and geared head, the idiot who left it out there in the, well, in the snow. Know, so, that happens. That yeah. happens. And then Gary Selar, who uh, do? does a lot of drone photography, might have seen his stuff. Run into him several times down here before. And uh, folks are starting to show up here now at Bullhead Point. This is a very popular place to watch the boats because it's directly across from Bay Shipbuilding and uh, it's a good spot to, to watch them tuck the boats in. If you don't have a drone, I mean a drone is the place to watch them tuck the boats in. Yeah, if you want to keep going down to Hill Point uh, there in William C, uh, I'll try and bust up some ice here and then you can come back and uh, maybe bust right down the middle of that uh, sheet we got right behind us. Yes sir. All right, so that was uh, Steve Ross of the William Gaynor the tug talking with the captain of the block. Going to bust up some ice for him. But they were just mentioning prior to that, um, I think they were talking maybe to somebody at Bay Ship across the way here. She can come down the, <laughs> the bay, but they have no place to park her. So the Masabi Miner, which is this boat right here, is docked perpendicular to some berths behind her so they have to move her forward so that the block can back in it's a real jigsaw puzzle uh, trying to get all of these boats tied up and in a position where they can work on them easily and be able to move them around if they need to so the thousand footers that are parked to the outside perpendicular um, they're the ones that kind of create a bit of a traffic jam and that's what the miner's doing now. So they're having to move the miner, which they're saying now might not be until mid-afternoon. And here it is, uh, 8.36 in the morning. So this could be a long day. Just the squelch on this. So the block's having to back up because 
it can't get through the ice. Steve Ross is going to uh, get out in front and try to break that ice up. Try to ram our way through. Two days ago, there was hardly any ice at all on this bay. But the temperature dropped considerably in the past couple of days. It's about 20 degrees out right now. It was in the mid to upper 30s, so above freezing. It's a real challenge trying to get these boats in. Just cleaning some new filters here. Uh, magnetic with lens covers. How about it? Got those through a Kickstarter program. Maven is the company. Uh, looking forward to trying those out on my, on my trip coming up here in a week after next already. All right, so there were a total of 18 vessels you saw in that last photo there from the video um, that comprised the winter layup at Bay Ship this year. That makes for a full house. Bay ship is working around the clock, three shifts a day, to get uh, get them all ready for spring fit out. And I believe the suit locks are opening on March 25th this year, so the boats will be leaving a day or two beforehand. They don't want to waste any time. They want to be waiting at the door when it opens, so to speak. So on to the updates. Last October, I told you about the book I've been working on now for well over five years. Uh, about the unique cultural, civic, historical, and natural diversity of uh, the Door Peninsula, where I live. The title of the book is called Behind the Door, uh, same as the videos, but the subtitle is Profiles of a Peninsula. Um, I thought it was finished when I turned it over to the publisher last October, and then, uh, you know, life kind of got in the way, just about the time that Colleen was diagnosed with, uh, with cancer, we went through her surgery and all of that. Uh, in uh, October, November, she started radiation treatments and that consumed all of November and December. And she's doing very well now, thank you. Thank you all who have been inquiring. Uh, she's finished up her last radiation treatment on December 30th and she's gradually getting back her strength and her stamina and she's, you know, getting... Uh, Getting her attitude back a little bit, which is good. She's got a good attitude. So um, she wanted me to pass on her uh, gratitude to you uh, for your kind concern and your words of support and the messages you've sent along to her through me. It means a lot to both of us. So um, since the beginning of the year then, I've been going back and forth uh, on design and layout content with the publisher. And it's been a I would have to say a painfully slow process, but we're nearing the finish line. And although I can't give you a date yet, it's looking like it'll be around the end of May. So fingers crossed. Um, the other bit of news I wanted to share with you is about my first photography road trip in nearly two years. And, you know, I just got to say that 
Winters here on the peninsula, they can be long, very long, dark and dreary. And uh, I thought it would be nice, you know, to get away from the ice and snow. Uh, and so I'm headed to Fairbanks, Alaska. That's right. I'm heading up near the Arctic Circle and where there's very few <laughs> hours of daylight. And uh, I'm heading up there with a few other photographers to capture primarily the beautiful and magical northern lights. Um, we're also going to Denali National Park. We're going dog sledding, among other things, but mostly it's to shoot the aurora. And this has been on my short list for a very, very long time. And I plan on bringing my video gear with me so you can go along. How about it? All right, so uh, until then, take care of yourselves, stay safe, and, you know, I'll see you down the road. All right, thanks for watching, everyone. Take care.